back to the Tarot Cottage. My name is Amy. I'm back today with a pick a card reading for you. Um, I just want to say a big welcome back to my beautiful returning subscribers. Thank you guys so much for your support of me and support of each other in the comments section. Thank you to everybody who has reached out to me via Etsy, via Instagram, especially concerning some of the scammers on this YouTube, um, in the YouTube comment section, but also on Instagram. Um, there is somebody who is posing as multiple tarot channels and DMing people, offering readings. Um, please be advised that I would never approach somebody in the comment section um, other than to inform you that you've won the free reading giveaway. Um, and I make it very clear that it's me. <laughs> um, and I never approach via direct messaging offering reading. So please keep yourselves protected. Um, and if you are on Instagram and you follow me there, please be sure to block and report anyone that approaches you via the Instagram DMs. Um, if you are finding yourself here for the very first time, we want to welcome you to this space, to our beautiful family here. I do pick a card readings on this channel, so please pull up a chair, grab yourself some snacks and a little drink, and we'll have a chat because we're all friends when we gather here together. So today's pick a card reading, we're doing a love message from the person on your mind, a no contact love message, and this is sort of a check-in that we're doing. I used to do this on Sundays, making it a soulmate Sunday type of day, um, where it could be someone you think is your soulmate or someone that you just feel really intrinsically connected to in spirit that you're no longer in physical contact with. It's a check-in with them on how they're currently feeling, what are their secret thoughts that they're having of you at this time. Um, so we do have three piles for you to choose from today. We have pile number one here with the Edgar Allan Poe tarot and this piece of hematite. We have pile number two with the happy tarot and this carnelian palm. And pile number three with the erotic fantasy tarot, I believe it's called, I think, but I'll double check that. And the quartz point here. So whichever pile or whoops, <laughs> piles are calling out to you, there may be a message waiting for you from spirit today. I'm going to jump right into pile number one. Again, it's a no contact love message from the person on your mind. What are their current feelings and secret thoughts of you? Pile number one. Hello everybody, in pile number one, you were drawn to this piece of hematite or perhaps to the Edgar Allan Poe tarot and this is your reading. A no contact love message from the person on your mind. What are their current thoughts, um, secret feelings for you that they don't share with other people? We're gonna start with tarot today. We're going to do some message cards. We're gonna end your reading with a charm cast at the end. So how are they currently thinking and feeling about you? What are some of their current thoughts about your no contact situation, about the connection in general? What are their current feelings towards you? So we have the hanged man coming out with the death card. There is definitely a, a fear of permanency here about the situation at hand. And they are sort of going through this process. You can even see this particular hanged man. It's like they're tied down while this sharp object is being swung in front of them. It's like a pendulum swinging. It's like they worry that too much time has passed. They're also sort of going through the process of grieving you in a way, like going through the process of grieving the connection. And it's a painful process. It's not something that's easy because back of the deck is already the strength card. So it's something that they're having a really hard time overcoming. Um, but they're I feel like they're trying to surrender to how things are because they recognize that there's just no they don't see the light at this point. They don't see that there is hope for more. And I'm not saying that's the case of the situation, but that's their perception at this very moment when it comes to you and the, the current climate of the disconnect. How are they currently feeling? It's almost like they feel like they're at the mercy of time here. And that's what they want. Like they feel like they're at the mercy of time when it comes to you. And here's the four of swords. Now the four of swords is a meditative card. It is calls for healing within that meditation. Um, and this one is very dark. They're in the midst of it. Like they're not, they haven't gained um, the light yet. So they are suffering because of this disconnect. Um, and they don't know if you feel the same way, but I feel like there's this, there's very strong energy coming in with both these major arcanic themes being presented first. Um, you are on their mind quite a bit. 
And it almost feels like they've only worked through a fraction of such, to be honest, and I'm not trying to dissuade you or discourage you, but it almost feels like they've only gone through the process of a fraction of that reflection period of what it's going to take for them to fully feel whole and fully feel um, not at the mercy energetically of these of this connection. We have the Seven of Wands because they are struggling. They're, they are still struggling with this flame that still burns for you. And when reality hits them, and I put quotation marks around that, when reality hits them, um, it's a very strong grieving process. It's almost, and you know what I'm, my awareness is being brought to? It's like someone who has, and I'm not saying this is the situation with your connection, but it's like someone who has dementia, who has to be told every single day that their partner is no longer with them. It's like, it's like a grieving process that's a continuation for this person. Um, Knight of Swords, in this particular Knight of Swords, you can see there's dirt all over the boost. There's a shovel in the background covered in dirt um, because they, they're suppressing how they feel. They keep pushing it deeper and deeper down to destroy the evidence, but the evidence is all over the place they, and they can't shake that. It's like trying to clean up after, after a murder scene. It's like, I can't hide how I feel. They wear it on their sleeve and that's a big problem for this person. I feel like wearing it on their sleeve. We have here the Nine of Wands. And this Nine of Wands, you can see the devil looming over top. And this it's it's very um, rife with insecurity. Rife with and and they're insecure and they're feeling frustrated with themselves for holding on to it. It's like they feel like it's a weakness within themselves that they can't shake it, but they don't understand that the inability for them to shake you is actually um, evidence of how strong the connection actually is but this person feels very practical in nature it's like they don't want they don't know how to wrap their heads around a spiritually guided connection perhaps at this time in their life all they know is that they're being pushed towards you know reflection of you and they're still struggling with that and they feel like it's taking too long too they think that that's also an evidence of how weak they are because it's like i should have the power to overcome this by now i didn't expect it to be this difficult back of the deck is the queen of swords and they don't the thing that they struggle with the most is i feel like they're either waiting for you to make some type of move towards them because that would be evidence to them that they're not alone but they feel very isolated but because that hasn't happened for whatever reason um their position your position whatever the case may be because that hasn't happened there's a sense here of like assuming making that assumption that you do not feel the same way. And that's a definite assumption. And you know, my mom used to say that to assume makes an ass out of you and me. So, and that's the truth is that they're not seeing things clearly, but all of this thought process is being bred by this devil, by their insecurity. How do they truly feel for pile number one, please? The ace of pentacles. This looks like a dung beetle. <laughs> You know, it looks like, you know, somebody who's struggling with the concept of releasing an opportunity that they never took advantage of. You know, it's like they're they're going over and over in their mind the struggle that they that they couldn't overcome with you. This opportunity that they couldn't quite grasp onto fully and take advantage of. And they are struggling now. Three of swords. Look at that heart, the telltale heart, pierced in so many different directions. Sometimes the three of swords is talking about a third party situation that you or this person may find themselves in currently. Um, and that's a side message to the emotional message that's being expressed here today because I'm dealing with collective energy. And so make sure that you take these situations um, as they resonate to your situation. There is someone here that feels that the obstacles in place are insurmountable because there are other practical situations at play. And they feel like their responsibilities now seem a little bit fruitless. It's like life right now at this moment, on the other side of some of these epiphanies that they have had, life, their struggles, their responsibilities, the path that they chose, it seems a little bit monotonous. It's like I'm doing, I'm going through the motions and it's like every day is the same day. It feels like that. Six of Pentacles. In this particular Six of Pentacles, which is all about giving and receiving of energy, information, energy exchanges, um, it's like he's they're weighing. 
They're weighing the weight of who feels more. They're also like weighing the consequences of actions as well. And some of the co some of the consequences of acting towards you seem very dire. It seems like they could slice, you know, this person and and put them in harm's way. And we have the two of wands. But in the midst of all of this separation, in the midst of all of this healing that they're trying to accomplish, um, those thoughts of you spark in. And the healing phase is disrupted by the fantasy. It's disrupted by the, the desire. All of these wands um, representing a thought, uh, a desire, a want. And, and being in this particular two of wands, the wands are trapped within the confines of these lanterns. Trapped. Both of you may find yourselves in very similar situations as far as third parties. I'll just put that out there. It's like you're both trapped on either side of this gateway by restrictions, by practical things. And it's like literal windows, like looking into the window of another person's home. Here's the devil. She's locked away behind this, this wall of stone. The de you know, and feeling like I'm locked away behind a foundation I built. And, and some of the reality of the loss of this connection being found there, trapped within those walls. We have the temperance card with the devil. And there's a real sexual energy component, you know, associated with those energies for me right now. Because the temperance at its base meaning is about alchemy. It's about coming together. It's about physically mixing, and there's a sexual component to it with the seven of wands, with the devil. This is all representing as well the obstacles in place too, and the longevity of the disconnect that you guys have experienced together. Because it feels like a lot of time has gone by, but it doesn't matter how much time goes by, it doesn't dim the desire, it doesn't dim the flame here. Because the truth is, is that you're both wearing masks. The truth is that you both feel very similarly and you're both too afraid to step out and share that experience. It's like you're both waiting for the other person because you're both insecure about taking the necessary steps, perhaps because they are, could be very practical ones, but also about making and making real practical decisions and overcoming your fears associated with those leaps. This person is taking their responsibilities right now very seriously, but they're also seeing, they're seeing through the lesson of life, through this walkabout, that it's not as fulfilling as they thought it would be. As not as fulfilling as they thought that it would be with you. What are some of their secret thoughts? Pile number one, please. What are their secret thoughts? Pile one. We have well family wishes come true and it came it came out um upside down family wishes come true and there could be a family unit in place here so please keep that as it resonates it's like again the stone well this foundation of what we're drawing from but it was reversed it's like we're not getting the satisfaction that and even there it wanted to reverse we're not getting the satisfaction that we assumed we would get in the course that we took in life We have here chairs empty. Someone is leaving your life. And that's what the, it's like they feel that. They feel an emptiness inside. And their logic tells them that they should try to detach. Their logic tells them it's one-sided. It's not the truth. And I feel like every time they go into a reflected reflection phase, they get ushered in that truth. And that's why the light, the flames won't go out because ultimately that flame is still ignited. Um, we do have basket recognition and reward for merit. And they are potentially protecting something that they've built up that gives us this, this guise of, of merit in, in life. You know, we feel like we have to hit certain checkpoints. And if we hit certain checkpoints in life at a certain time and we have the white picket fence and we have the house and we have all of these things, that means we're a success quote unquote, that means we've led a successful life, quote unquote. That's not what spirit sees in a very different light than we do. All of that means nothing. It's all about our spiritual ascension. It's all about our ability to come towards these, these obstacles, these challenges, and to be able to override them and to do things afraid. But that's the beauty of the nature of this connection though, is that you push them to the precipice of that reflection and they do the same for you. 
And what you two do at the point of that doorway is up to you at that point. That's why I often start my readings with this is your path. You know, your guides are just walking it behind you. Um, it's what you do with these doorways that make the big difference. And there, it's like they're waiting for you. You're waiting for them. We have horseshoe for good luck. Too many spirit. How are they currently feeling? What are their secret thoughts? We have here moon changes in your life and they're, they're reflecting upon you, but they're also fearful of making those changes too. They're scared to make those changes with you or for you. And as much as they, you know, value this connection and know it's special, their ego has a very strong grip upon them. We have wedge. Someone is trying to come between you and a friend or something that you want. So there's something in between the two of you. And back of the deck says tent, temporary situation. Um, the tent is a beautiful reminder that this lifetime is temporary and that time waits for no one. This person is also hoping that it's like they're still holding on. It's like things haven't come full circle with the nines. We haven't had the opportunity to, to you know, have the community to, of the tens. We haven't had the opportunity to come full circle and face our challenges yet. Or we've had the opportunity, but we haven't pushed through yet. So there's still this expect, expectancy of more coming from this person because I feel like they don't know how to detach from you. What are their secret thoughts of pile number one, please? What are they secretly thinking? What are their secret thoughts? What would they like to say? I'm always replaying everything that happened in my mind when it comes to you. And that's the Four of Swords. The revisit, even the, the Hermit. Um, the Hanged Man can add in that reflection as well. And I've come to the conclusion that I wish I had fought harder. And that you are my soulmate. They're also coming out with, I can't make the first move towards you at this time because they feel restricted with that devil energy. But they, it's like, it's not at this time. But I feel like there's patience being executed by this person. I don't know how to tell you the truth, but it almost feels like they're trying to come up with some type of plan or some type of course of action that they could take. They're saying, I can't come forward right now. But again, I don't feel like that's a permanent thing. I feel that they may, may, may make moves towards you in the future, but it's it's going to come, it could even be years, if I'm honest. It may not be a very fast approach. And you may be okay with that trajectory because I feel like you yourself are also in something that doesn't allow for a lot of wiggle room. What are their current secret thoughts of pile one, please? It's like, I know what I want. I just don't necessarily know how to execute that right at this moment. And I don't know how to let this go either. So, and that's why they're in this constant reflection phase. That's why it's like they're stopped and halted at this reflection and planning phase because they can't take that first leap. They don't know how to overcome this challenge yet. So they're sort of in a state of limbo. I'm going to fix it, but first I have to fix me. And I gave you the impression that I did not care, but that was a lie. Oops. Let's get one more. And I also saw my life is in chaos right now. I want to call you. Would you answer me? Back of the deck is where have you been? What have you been doing? They're very insecure about what your opinion of the situation actually is. Let's get... How does this person currently think and feel? What are their secret feelings for pile number one, please? We have focus on love. Look for the good in everyone. And you know what? You can see here she's communing here with this dragon, which is always a symbol of the divine masculine for me, or the ego specifically within the divine masculine. Um, and it's talking about focusing on love as, as a way to overcome that ego and the fears that lie there. And that's how... This person can overcome the situation at hand. That's how you can, is if we focus on love, there leaves it leaves no shadow for doubt. Spirit doesn't want to minimize the practical concerns and the fear associated with those leaps. They just always want us to know that they're rewarded. Those bold steps are always rewarded. We have here, act as if your partner is here, whether you have someone in your life or not. Act as if they are with you so that you'll always consider them. 
and they always consider you. That's the thing is that you, and I think that sometimes that makes them feel foolish because I feel like there's been a long time where you guys have not seen each other. And so it makes them feel foolish that they're always thinking about you. And that when they think about the future, they apply you to that future image in their mind when it doesn't make sense to their logical brain in the present energy of how things are. Back of the deck says, the only thing that is real is love. Shift your focus back to love. So all the fear that you experience during the reflections, all of the consequences that you fear about towers falling, um, if we shift our focus back to love, and, you know, love is a re representation of source, of God. If God before us, who can be against us? Let's get a charm bowl for you, pile number one. I always end my, char my readings with a charm cast with some tiny tarot. So the future of this connection in the bowl. What does the future hold in this no contact situation? For pile number one, I missed the bowl. We have the sunshine. We have the... Page of Wands, and we have the Seven of Wands. Very strong fire energy here. It could be a Leo, Aries, Sagittarius. Um, there's a lot of want here. There's a lot of curiosity. It's like we never went down this pathway together, and we really should have, because on the other side of the obstacles can be this beautiful sunshine, can be gratification. There's been a delay in that gratification because it's like we're stopped at the challenge. Here in the present, the Seven of Wands is talking about determination to overcome our obstacles. Um, and that's sort of the requirement here if we want to have things come to light, if we want to have um, what we want in this connection, if we want to have epiphanies, then we need to sort of face the dangers of what lies ahead on that path and face those challenges head on because it doesn't showcase insurmountable challenges between the two of you. We can overcome them. They're, they just may be scary and require some of our strength to overcome them. In the bowl today, we have the letter cool. Acting unaffected, but truly affected. We have divine timing with the little clock. We have the letter R. We have the rose of hope. And we do have the um, seahorse, which is a surrender of going with the flow. We have this little white. I always think about like nursing scrubs with this little white with the heart so you could be a nurse or work in the hospital of some kind we have you could be a some type of healer we have the shamanic feather um, we have the ohm symbol so somebody who is requiring healing too through meditation and doing a lot of reflection about this situation we have another rose so rose and actually there's an r in the bowl so rose could be an actual name of this person as well that could be a connection you could be named rose um, we have the two little acorns. The acorns are, are a symbol of like the egg of potential of what can be. These ones are linked because it's like a soulmate energy that you feel with this person. And it's like it hasn't been planted. It's like we were waiting for the right time, the right conditions, and we waited too long and we never got a chance to plant them. And so now all of this potential just lies in the balance. We have the Knight of Pentacles, somebody who is responsible, looking after their responsibilities. And we have the Knight of Wands. So we have these two battles going on between these two knights. One is responsible and wants to adhere to where their position is. And the other one is restless and wants to act upon you. But they don't want to hurt anybody. And they don't want to cause havoc in your life or their life. All right, group number one, that's what I have for you today. I hope that it resonated with you. I wish you so much luck in this connection if you choose to pursue it in the future. Your guides and angels are working with you. If this did resonate with you, I would love for you to drop me a comment below. And if you are a subscriber to this channel, be sure to hit your notification bell so that I can enter you in for a chance to win a free reading with me. Um, you can also check me out on, on Instagram. And for the next couple of days, I am offering a chance to win a free mini read over there. So be sure to check me out in that link below. And I offer um, private readings through my Etsy account. And that link is below as well. But I hope that you come back here for another day at the Tarot Cottage, and I hope that you have a beautiful day. Take care. Hello, everybody. Pile number two, you were drawn to the red carnelian palm, or perhaps to the happy tarot here. And this is your reading, a no contact love message from the person on your mind. What are their current feelings and their secret thoughts of you? We're going to start with tarot today. We're going to move into message cards and then finish off your reading with a charm cast at the end. So let's take a look here and see how are they currently thinking and feeling about this connection and about you in disconnect, no contact. 
How are they currently feeling about pile number two, please? Ooh, we have the four of cups along with the eight of swords. Um, this is a very restricted energy and they feel pretty helpless to create any type of change here. I'm not saying that it's the, it's not gospel. It's not the truth. It's just how they perceive things to be because even in the eight of swords, you can see that they're wearing masks right now. They think they're sitting in a prison, but it's just a prison of thought. You know, it's our fears, our worries that associate us with this four of cups energy. Um, they could find themselves being really sort of bored in life in general with the four of cups present, especially in the recent past, um, leading them to sort of a lot of epiphanies or thoughts towards you. When they think about you and this connection as it stands, it fills them with a jealousy. I almost feel like a jealousy coming in with this five of wands um, and insecurity because they feel like there's nothing they can do about it. How are they currently feeling about pile two, please? Yeah, because they put you on the top tier. If you are the divine feminine energy um, watching this video right now, this is definitely representing you. Everything beautiful about the divine feminine. And I say divine feminine, but it's all about energy. So it has really no bearing on the actual um, gender of the person. It's really all about how they perceive you. The epitome of abundance. Somebody, somebody who they're definitely not on the same level as you. You could be a a mother. I will say that right now. <laughs> That's not for everyone, but that is for someone watching. You could have children and they're aware of that. And I don't feel like it's children with them. I feel like you had children with someone else. And that's where this jealousy is starting to spin up because it's like other people get a chance to see you in this dynamic. Other people get a chance to be a party to this abundance that you represent. And they do not feel like that's them. We have the high priestess. Back of the deck is the Page of Pentacles. And you can see in the background here, this, this field of potential that never got planted. It's like I never ever walked through this gateway and now they are kicking themselves. So it doesn't feel like an X. It almost feels like a lost or missed opportunity, it feels like here. Can we clarify the Four of Cups? Because it almost feels like they always thought you were a little bit out of their league. And because of that, it was not the truth, but because of that mindset, they never acted upon you. Yeah, here's the world it, underneath the Four of Cups. So definitely unfinished business that they now feel is beyond the realm of their ability to maintain or control. And I feel like it's because of a lack of their own. They didn't act in time. It's like in the past, they didn't act in time. They weren't brave enough. They let, there was too stubborn. They were too stubborn in this idea that they had lots of time or that there was unlimited time towards you, but they didn't see what's sitting right in front of their face. And now they can't see what, what they want to see sitting right in front of their face. Here's the nine of cups, which is you. The biggest wish of all, the nine of cups. It's like you represent that one opportunity that we just saw was a representation of what could have been. If I just seen what was in front of my face or had the foresight to act upon my feelings then, but they, but they, and they worry about it now. I just saw the nine of swords. They worry about it now. Clarify please the five of wands. Whoops. Four of swords. The Four of Swords is a reflection tool that calls for healing. And so this person does feel like they're in pain. We have the Moon, the Seven of Pentacles coming out together. Can we clarify the Empress, please? Oh, I'm sorry, the Empress, the High Priestess. There's a sense of evolution, too, of like you growing and evolving. So there could be a, a, a quite a few years where you haven't seen this person. Again, not for everyone. Um, but for someone specific, we have the King of Pentacles back of deck with the Three of Pentacles and the Three of Wands. Now, I'm definitely getting a strong sense of jealousy from this person at this very moment, like at this very moment. And even this King of Pentacles reversed, it's like they hide some of their feelings about their jealousy for you. Um, and they don't have a lot of follow through to act upon it. So they would never act upon that jealousy and charge in towards you. And I feel like their position doesn't allow that anyway. 
I feel like there could be someone who, you know, there's Taurus energy really strong here. This person could have moved forward into another connection. They also are very much aware of your situation too. And you can see here with the three of wands, it's not that they don't want more, but it's like they see you floating away, floating away with your new foundation, floating away on your new life. And they don't want to cause havoc for that. They're intimidated by this new life that you have. They're intimidating on about whatever they perceive your abundance to be. They're intimidated by that. But they're not prepared to make change here. They're growing impatient. They're growing frustrated. They're almost like anxiety here. And they're, they're frustrated and they've got this anxiety because they feel like this is not fair. It doesn't feel balanced. Nothing feels fair in this situation because they do feel very faded and connected to you with this wheel of fortune. And that epiphany, this, this idea of how important you were to them and what path they should have taken with you didn't happen until you had already walked away from the connection in some way. Hmm. Let's get a few. Can we clarify, please, the high priestess? How is this person currently thinking and feeling in no contact from pile number two? They, they worry that you have completely moved on and that their feelings um, are one-sided. Here's the Page of Wands, the Five of Cups, the Six of Swords. They're, they watched you walk away. They watched you float away. And then there's unfinished business. They're saying that they have so many things they want to get off of their chest, but they feel like they're too late to say it. And part of what they want to say is that, man, I wish I'd left back then. I wish I had gone down there and I'm so sorry that I waited for so long and now I'm paying the ultimate price. They do feel like they're paying a price for it. Can we, can we clarify please the three of pentacles? This is not, message is not for everyone, but for someone specifically, there are, you know, other foundations in place here. Page of pentacles. And we have the five of pentacles. This person thought that this new foundation that they were embarking upon, they thought that it was the key to success for them. And sometimes that happens where these foundations that we build up for ourselves to create stability, to create a sense of security in ourselves are the same things that we end up raging against or, or rebelling against at the end of the day because we recognize that the emotional abundance isn't there but we wouldn't have come to that awareness unless we went through this process so it, it does have a purposeful action in our life here is the six of cups back of the deck is the four of cups though because this is the combination they may have practical security you may have practical security but you can see the six of cups with the four of cups equals that ten of cups but they don't know how to how to bridge that gap they don't know how to feel powerful enough to create change because, it, and they're not prepared to. King of Pentacles is not, if he's in reverse, he's not prepared to step down from that throne because he's too worried about what he's going to lose. And so now they've sort of attached this, this same mentality of the Four of Cups here of apathy, of powerlessness. They've attached that to the future too. So the same realm that they were in in the past where they didn't act upon you, they haven't completely learned that lesson. That's why the Eight of Swords came out with the mask because they haven't learned that lesson. It's like they have to repeat the course. They have to go through the suffering again so that they can learn the lesson so that they can act upon their inspire, inspiration towards you. But at this point, they've convinced themselves or they've allowed the ego to convince themselves that there's, it's naive for them to assume that anything positive could come out of a reunion. And they're not listening to their higher selves. They are sort of succumbing to their ego. And that's the battle that's happening right now with this person as well as they're battling this idea from the ego. How is this person currently feeling for pile number two, please? And no contact. What are their current thoughts and feelings? You are a temptress to them. Solution to see a broke or seduction to see a broken promise. Um, and I feel like if they are in a commitment, you would be the thing that could lure them. It's like if anything could lure them, it would be you. And there's a temptation in that.
and we have night wind facing fear, subconscious release and healing. And they do dream about you quite a bit because I feel like that's when they have the, the freedom to do so. They do dream about you quite a bit. Um, it's, it's during the night where they go through the process of this insecurity of this fear. Um, they are trying to overcome the connection because they, again, the four of swords is a call for healing and it's causing turbulence, like their attraction to you, their desire for you, despite the disconnect is causing an, an internal turbulence inside of them. And so there is this subconscious desire from their higher self to release and to move forward if they're not prepared to make steps towards expansion to then release and surrender to the flow that they found themselves in. Back of the deck is the enchanted forest, mystery, magic, and excitement. And they do feel like it was their own sort of doing that suppressed the optimate, optimal growth that could have happened between the two of you. They let their insecurities rule the roost in the past, and they're still doing that. This, this tree of life is a representation of what they have grown since the connection um, was in disconnect. But also it represents the potential of what could have been. And they feel like they're now it's just up in this ether, all these hearts, it's like the wishes of what could have, should have, would have been in your connection. How do they truly feel about pile? We have give your relationship a chance, work on your partnership. They do think it's one-sided. Look at how the masculine is staring at her and she's turned away. Um, ignoring the fact that her arms are fully wrapped around him and just focused on the fact that she's turning away. Um, it would be their dream to work on this, but I don't know that they're in a position to do so or that you're in a position to, to do so. We do have true love. This is the romance of a lifetime. And great step, great love is worth the steps we're guided to take. It's loves like these that push us towards these obstacles, these challenges. And then we're asked at that point whether we're ready to overcome them, whether we're ready to kind of harness all of our power and overcome them. And sometimes we're not, you know, sometimes that's why we find ourselves in these loops with people. Um, we have keep an open mind because your soulmate may differ from your usual type or expectations. I don't think it was the, the intention of either one of you to enter into other foundations or to move forward in life without your person, quote unquote. You know, I don't think that you had the awareness. The epiphany for this person came later. It could have been the exact same for you as well. Sometimes the truth can be staring us right in the face, but we need time and space and experience to be able to evolve to that state of, of reception, to be able to hear the message, to be able to see it clearly, and then to be able to act upon it. It's a process, Spirit says. It's a big process. How does this person currently think? What are their secret thoughts for pile number one, please? Secret thoughts for pile number one. I'm sorry, pile number two. It's pile number two. I would do anything for you. Whenever I see this card, though, I always think about that, that meatloaf song, but I won't do that. I'll do anything for you, but I won't do that. And it feels like that. It feels like there's something practical in place that's like, I can't risk 100% at this moment because I don't know if you even care. I don't know if you have the same feelings that I have. Wrongful advice. They don't want to make the wrong choice. They go, don't want to, and they, here's the six of cups reversed. So that's the thing is that in their mind, they sometimes allow the thought to come in that this is soulmate energy and that you want them to, and that there's a, a, a mutuality or mutual feeling between the two of you. But when we see the six of cups reversed, sometimes they convince themselves. Sometimes they allow that thought process to continue and they convince themselves that it's naive. It's unrealistic. Reunions here are not likely. Reunions here are difficult to create. Reunions here are not wanted by the other person. So they convince themselves of that, but they're because they don't want to do the wrong thing. They don't want to take a misstep in life. Um, and they, again, they're waiting for you. So this person may not be prepared to make steps towards you. They have no follow through, but sometimes, you know, they expect other people to come in and and create the change where they cannot. Back of the deck says, I want to start a family with you. The Ten of Pentacles reversed, but it is reversed. Which can talk about loneliness that they're feeling, but it's also about, you know, family conflict. So take that as it resonates to your situation. There could be other seeds planted here that are really requiring our attention at this time. How 
how are they currently secretly thinking? What are their secret thoughts right this moment for pile number two? I did not follow my heart in the past, but I am losing hope. And you know, we've seen that as soon as we put down the four of cups and the eight of swords, because they're losing hope because they're not seeing things objectively. They're succumbing to the fear. I can't make the first move towards you. And you know, whenever, <laughs> whenever um, my kids say I can't do something, I always say the same thing to them, always. I always say, take the T off of that I can. Take the T off of that I can. <laughs> it's really annoying, they hate it. But um, it's truly a, a message for us all and a lesson for us all. Whenever we say we can't do something, it, what we are really saying is we won't do it. The distance between us is killing me. And we have, I do not know how to fix things. And that's a more honest sort of application of like, I can't make the first move. That's not the truth. It's like, I just don't know how. I don't know what steps to take right this moment. It says I'm letting go of the past. They're trying to surrender. They're trying to heal. They, they feel like it's causing issues. Their feelings for you are still causing issues for them, even after all this time. And so they see that as kind of a weakness. What are your current secret thoughts for pile number two, please? We have goldfish, increase in material wealth or spiritual growth. Uh, and we also have broken wishbone, wish will not be granted. And it's like they, this goldfish, it's, you know, speaks to me about going with the flow. It talks about the emotions representing around the fish as well, though. But it says increase in material wealth or spiritual growth. It's like they have to choose between the two. They have to choose between the two. And the wish that they have towards you, they feel like is not possible. So it's like I have to choose between this desire that I have and this material life that I'm growing for myself. And my wish may not be, brand, may not be granted in this situation. We have coins, money will be coming to you. And we also have cane, pay attention to your health. Um, the coins, the cane, these are all very practical energies of position. We have younger woman, dealings or relationship with a younger woman. So third party situations here as well. Building up positions, building up a foundation that they can depend upon when they're older as well. Because where they're sitting could have stability but there's just not as much emotional fulfillment that they expect. And um, we have here hammock taking a vacation physically or mentally. And we have another younger woman cards, dealings or relationship with a younger woman. So back of the deck says teapot, deep friendship with someone of the same sex. So take that as it resonates to your situation as well. Um, this hammock energy is a real suspension like surrender, surrendering to the healing, surrendering to their, their financial position, their practical position. And you may find that this is very mirrored energy and this is sort of reversed where you yourself are, are in sort of some other dynamic where we have to choose between a want of the heart and a want of something that's already practically in place. Let's get a charm bowl for you, group number two. The future of this connection in the charm bowl with the tiny tarot for group number two, please. What does the future hold here in this connection? We have the page of wands. In the reverse position, we have the Two of Cups. We also have the High Priestess. <clears throat> now, the Two of Cups is representing that great love we were talking about here with your card, the light, once in a lifetime true love. Um, you could really feel strongly, strongly connected to this person. Some people would look at that and say soulmate, twin flame, that type of energy. Not everybody subscribes to that, but a lot of people do. Um, and this is like an inner knowing too. So this is a very old connection. Um, whatever title you want to place upon it, it's a very old connection and there's many valuable lessons that you have learned through the process of even not embarking upon it. And I know that seems weird, but the, the page of wands in the reverse position in the past tense is really talking about a road less traveled, a road that we didn't take and how the epiphanies, the lessons have still been rampant and being learned amidst that disconnect. We don't just learn lessons down the paths that we do take. We learn the lessons as well on the paths that we do not take. And that's what's happening in this connection is there's so many epiphanies about the purpose of this connection and the truth of this connection amidst the disconnect. And some of these truths would not have come to light. 
without the benefit of the disconnect, which is, you know, it's like um, a rock and a hard place we find ourselves in. We have the letter U today in the bowl. We have the fish bone. And I think about the Ten of Swords with the fish bone. So loss, releasing something that our heart has become transfixed upon. We have this heart with the constellation. It's like you'll always be in my heart. And your, your seduction or your temptation, very attracted to you. We do have the world here. This world marble is chipped. It's chipped. It's like flat. I can get it to lay flat if I find the chip. But it's a chipped world. And there's like this big striation in the middle of it. I found it dug in my garden. I dug it out of the earth. Um, it's talking about unfinished business, scattered potential, having to rise above that as well because they're trying to focus on endurance now. It's like I'm trying to just focus on what I've started to build. But there are lessons for them along that path as well. We have endurance here with the elephant. I think of India as well and good luck. And that world is just floating around. Everything's in limbo. All right, group number two, that's what I have for you today. Hope that it resonated with you. If it did, I would love to hear your story in the comment section below. And I would love for you to subscribe to this channel if you are not a part of this family already. And if you do, be sure to hit your notification bell so that I can enter you in for a chance to win a free reading with me. I also have an opportunity to win a free mini read on Instagram this week up until about Wednesday. So be sure to head over there and enter for your chance to win that. And I offer private readings through my Etsy account and that link is below. Um, but I do hope that you come back here for another day at the Tarot Cottage, and I hope you have a great day. Hello, everybody, in pile number three. You were drawn to the um, quartz point here, and this is your reading, a no-contact love message from the person on your mind. What are their current thoughts and feelings of you and this connection? What sort of secret thoughts are they holding to themselves? We're going to start with tarot. We're going to do a bunch of message cards and then we are going to end with your charm bowl as always. But let's begin with tarot and see how does this person currently feeling for you at this time. What are their current feelings and thoughts about pile three, please? We have a lot here. We have the four of pentacles. We have the knight of wands and we have the six of wands. Now I'm going to take these and I'm going to pair them together because I feel like they're very important. <laughs> um, there's a lot of passion behind how this person sort of feels about you. And when they think about you, um, they do they do apply a lot of passionate thought to you. There is some insecurity, though, with the Four of Pentacles. This can be a lack mindset or a fear of where this passion could lead them <laughs> um, in a practical sense. So they do put on masks when it comes to you. And I feel like they they are way they act way more confident and reserved about their feelings than they actually feel. You have the four of cups. This person does sort of have an inability to kind of decide. Um, here's the seven of cups. They have an inability to sort of decide about how much power they have to wield towards you because they feel drawn to you but they have an in, in, inability to decide whether or not they should head towards you. Um, and it feels like there are other opportunities that are um, that have come along that now have their attention or have your attention, maybe both. They, are, they like to fantasize about you and what could have been, what the two of you could have built together if they had maybe allowed their ego, um, if they had tamed their ego a little bit and... and shot their shot with you in the past because in some cases I feel like they didn't even get a chance to shoot their shot. I feel like there was a lot of heavy flirtation but maybe not a lot of actions um, to follow up that flirtation. So now they like to fantasize about those opportunities. They're also kicking themselves a little bit here too. We have the death card. It's coming with the six of swords and the seven of swords because there's a lot of things that they didn't say to you back then that have just been festering. All these truths below the surface that they didn't allow out. Um, and I think that there was a, 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 I think that they were pretty intimidated by the way you looked in the past. So I don't know if you were a little out of their league in the past, or they considered you to be out of their league a little bit. The death card talks about, you know, timing being an issue. You can see here the, the timer, the sand timer in the bottom of the card. They have this great big scythe. It's like, has the, t is the time up on this potential? like I still dream about they fantasize about a rebirth and new beginnings but they wonder if the time is up on this potential 
but you still have that arrow. I just keep, she's holding onto this bow. It's like you still, the arrow that you hit them with is still deeply entrenched inside them. We have here the queen of pentacles. They still think that you are sort of top tier. They still find you very attractive. You can see he's almost like worshiping her down below. Um, she's like this beautiful epitome of, of someone who doesn't have to do anything. And he's down here putting in all the effort. This can be um, an indicator of where you're sitting in life right now as well. So you could have um, other responsibilities on your plates at this time. Can we clarify, please, the Four of Pentacles? How are they currently feeling, thinking about you secretly? No contact. Whoop. We have the Judgment Reversed. They feel like they made some pretty bad judgment calls when it comes to you in the past and this led them to feeling kind of stuck in this rut it's like they feel like they sealed their deal here when it comes to you there's the devil but it's like time and space can't tame their desire for you and they almost feel it's it feels like obsessive it feels like an obsession here's the strength yeah Something they feel like they have to overcome now. And they are really insecure. The masculine here is very insecure about um, how you feel. And they feel like they've lost sort of the upper hand. Especially in the past, if they were really flirtatious with you, I feel like they think that they lost the upper hand with you at this point. They also are indicating that, and this is not for everyone, but it's definitely for someone. They're also indicating that a new beginning may not be possible for them or for you, but they are concerned more about themselves at this moment, but it may not be possible for them. We have the Empress. And there's a wonder here. It's interesting. There's this wonder. Here's the Ten of Cups. They wonder if you can sense them. I don't know if you can see at the bottom here this big conch shell and if when I was a little girl I had this great big shell and I used to hold it against my ear and I could hear the ocean or what I thought was the ocean and there's a sense of that it's like can you feel me can it's like are you struggling the way that I'm struggling and can we feel or pick up on each other's emotions in behind this empress if you look really closely you can see this giant huge snake the huge temptation that you represent because of how physically amazing you are, how beautiful, how attractive you are, um, you're, you represent this really huge temptation that they now feel like they have to guard themselves against a little bit. And even here, look at this Ten of Cups. She is the temptation. Here in the Queen of Pentacles, she's being worshipped. Um, there's a sense of you kind of having, having control over this person, even though there's no contact. It's like you have control over here. And we have the Nine of Cups reverse back of deck with the Two of Cups. It's like not only are you a want for this person, but they want you now. Like it's an urgency. This Nine of Cups reverse is saying, I don't want to wait for anything. I'm tired of waiting. I'm, I'm tired of this. I want this relationship. And, and they feel lost because they don't have it. They feel an emotional destitution because they don't have it. Now, Ten of Cups, again, there could be... Other foundations that you're a part of, that they're a part of, there could be children involved as well with the Ten of Cups. So please take that as it resonates to your situation. Definitely not for everyone. But it's like you have the power. If anyone has the power to lure them away from whatever they feel binds them, it's you. How do they currently feel? And I feel like I really need to draw your attention to the fact that we have here you know, the judgment, the devil, <laughs> you know, the strength card, the empress, uh, the death card. These are major arcanic themes that represent major life lessons that this person has brought into your experience and vice versa. So there's many, there's a lot of connection here that we're talking about. So you have had a huge influence on this person. And I feel like it's, it's a mutual thing. 
because this two of cups is talking about soulmate energy and you know when I first began my channel I sort of called these check-ins soulmate Sunday because there's a sense of being detached from our soulmate energy sometimes in the world um, and I think a lot of people can can resonate with that We have here, let your friends help you ask for and accept support from other people. This person could be keeping tabs on you through mutual friends, but more importantly, I feel like they were a friend. They were a friend. And it's like there's so much uncertainty about how you're feeling about the situation that they it's like they need reassurance from you. <laughs> it's like they need your reassurance that, that it's not all one-sided. We do have soulmate. Yes, this is your soulmate. We were just speaking of that. And we have calling in your soulmate. Your prayers, affirmations, and visualizations help to bring you closer together. It honestly doesn't even matter if you don't think this person's your soulmate because they think you are. It's all about our individual experience, you know? And so they have convinced themselves that this is soulmate energy and that there's a belonging here. But it's like, this is a wish. I don't want to wait for it anymore because it, it's mine. It belongs to me. And because it's not with me, I feel like a, a huge imbalance and insecurity but I also don't feel capable of creating change. How are they currently feeling and thinking about pile number three, please? What are their current thoughts and feelings in this disconnect? We have a lot of reflection that's going into you. Illusion, self-examination, distortion. And because we have the seven of cups right in the center, it's also fantasy encompassed in all of that too. And there's a lot of, of masculine, raw, masculine power behind this boar. She's wrestling it to the ground. And it's like that's what they have to do to sort of tame their insecurities, their fears, their lust, the fantasy, everything that encompasses this fantasy, whether it be good, whether it be bad. And the uncertainty, too. That's why they're reflecting so much because the reflections aren't leading them to any clear epiphanies about your feelings because there's a stoicism and independence about the Queen of Pentacles. It's like she's not letting out her secrets. We don't know how she feels. And they're apprehensive about that. They have doubt and fear that you feel as connected as they do because they feel super connected to you. And when we we make vulnerable assertions like this, when we're like, yes, this is my soulmate. Yes, this is how I feel. All of a sudden, we, we have this instant sort of buyer's remorse when we express ourselves or even let that energy out of ourselves in some way. And we retract because we're so fearful but not being matched or being rejected in some type of way. We have purification through fire, bare essentials, the naked truth, and wholeness on the back of the deck. And that's how we reach a level of, of wholeness. That's how we reach a level of certainty is we go through the fire. We face the fires. We face the obstacles. And that's been where we've stopped short in some of these connections is we, this person felt like they didn't face the fire in the, in the past. And that's been haunting them ever since. How are they secretly feeling about and thinking about pile number three, please? What are their secret thoughts? I really, really do miss you a lot. Despite outside appearances, they're struggling. That's why the strength card is required here amidst the confusion. They're struggling amidst it. And I feel like they've been struggling for a while because I'm just looking at that little tortoise. I'm not blind to the signs. I do see them. This internal communication that's happening. I feel your energy. I don't want to be with anyone else. But this gives me the indication that there may be other people. Um, it's like what we have and what we want are two entirely different things. I am so attracted to you. You do not know what you do to me. And you're so different, but that's why I love you. Back of this deck says, I'm severing ties with a karmic partner. So perhaps making plans to sever ties, perhaps making plans to fulfill this dream of being in communion with you. So take that as it resonates to your situation. Those are true secret thoughts for pile of the Ooh. I'm a very jealous person when it comes to you because there's ownership here. They're like, yes, this is my soulmate. There's ownership when it comes to you. 
I meant what I said, but it's reversed. <laughs> um, the Five of Swords energy, they've had some epiphanies. They want peace. They want a fair fight too. <laughs> they want peace after all of this turmoil between the two of you. I need more time though. And my life started when I met you. So two of cups, I need more time to try to execute shifts and changes. It, you know, this, this reading has set itself apart from the other two readings in the sense that there's a lot of, um, it's like they haven't, they have not given up this hope. I want a fresh start with you. And I left because you told me to. Not so much in words, I feel, but more so they feel like in actions and, or an inaction towards them. They're like, I got the message that I needed um, based on what you didn't do in our connection. How are they currently secretly thinking? I gave you the impression that I did not care and that was a lie. I miss you terribly. Do you miss me too? And that's what they started with, wasn't it? I really do miss you a lot. Yeah. I'm missing you right this second. So there's a longing for you. They're struggling in it. I know what I want. You make me weak everywhere. And then we also have here... No one compares to you. Back of the deck says, though, but I am afraid that I've already lost you on the back of that deck. Let's get a couple of these round cards. Current feelings, secret thoughts. Pile number three. And their person. What do they wish they could say? We have angel. Spiritual guidance and protection from harm. You can see that she's looking, he's looking, or she is looking right at that flame. There is a sense here of protecting this connection, wanting to protect you, wanting to protect this connection, hoping that your experience is a good one, and knowing that you're being spiritually guided. Again, adding to the soulmate energy here. We have teardrops, great personal sorrow that they're experiencing, and we have door. Opportunities are waiting for you, and that's what it doesn't feel over. It doesn't feel over. This door is shaped like a circle as well, which is like divine timing and, and um, you know, the wheel of fortune turning in our favor in the future. Um, back of the deck says hand, though, in need of help, guidance, and assistance in this situation. So there's, it's like, I, I know I want a fresh start, but I just don't know where to begin. I'm trying to protect this connection, but I just don't know where to start. And we have bear danger, especially in money matters. Um, back of this deck now says dog barking advice from a friend. This could have been a friendship friendship situation that should have evolved in the past. And I feel like this person does commune with with their friends, perhaps about their feelings for you, or at least one specific friend. Now there, the danger to this new beginning or the opportunity that may be waiting for the two of you down the road is the practical realm that the two of you find yourselves in, um, particularly perhaps in financial areas um, or other situations where you have or they have immersed themselves with other people's finances. So please take that as it resonates. Let's get a charm bowl for you. I'll turn that one around. Charm bowl for pile number three, please. The future of this connection in the bowl. The future of this connection in the bowl with the tiny tarot. We have the Queen of Swords. We also have the Page of Pentacles and the Two of Cups. I'm telling you, it doesn't feel like this is the end all be all. It doesn't feel like things are gonna stay where they're at in this connection pile three. Uh, the Queen of Swords, it, I feel like they could be waiting for some sort of encouragement, especially if you're an air sign. <laughs> they could be waiting for some type of encouragement or for you to sort of lead the charge if you are the divine feminine energy in this connection. Um, because the Queen of Swords is, is purposeful. She's truth teller. She leads the charge. She has firm boundaries as well. Um, but we do have the Ace of Pentacles and the Two of Cups. There are doorways coming for someone watching. I'm not saying that's for everyone, but for someone watching, there are doorways coming. Now, we always have these doors. You know, this particular door is closed. 
It doesn't mean it's not a fated door. It just means we have to choose whether we're going to embark upon it or not. On the other side of that door can be a relationship with this person potentially. But in this Ace of Pentacles, you can see through the archway, if you look teeny tiny closely, you'll see some sharp peaked mountains, which really indicates some struggles, some obstacles that we may need to overcome if we choose that pathway. But every pathway holds within it struggles or obstacles that we have the confidence to overcome or the power to overcome with confidence. So it's not insurmountable challenges, um, but Spirit says it will be your decision whether or not you want to walk through it or not. It's not over. It doesn't feel over in this pile. In, oh, we, I smushed my cards a little bit here in the bowl. On the bowl today, we have the letters R and the letter L. Real life. I don't know why I just heard that. We have the forget me not. And we have the little butterfly of transformation and the big butterfly of transformation. And that's where it has to start. You know, it has to start inside of ourselves because our outside world is a reflection of our inner state. So we need to, you know, reestablish the, the, equilibrium there first so there's an inner turmoil that's exp being experienced we do have the divine mercy here in the bowl um, there could be a catholic connection so take that as it resonates but it's also asking for mercy <laughs> it's like i want someone and again with this energy it's like wanting someone to come in and save me or give me reassurance um, pour their mercy upon me we have the owl looking at things from a higher perspective and we do have the key. So anybody who feels trapped or stuck to be able to create change, it's all about awareness and perception and, and the steps we're guided to take towards great loves like this. We have the love as well. And we have the little playing cards, the Queen of Pentacles and the, King, the Knight of Swords. Queen of Pentacles representing perhaps an earth energy and a position that you or this person may hold not wanting to create havoc at this moment. And then the Knight of Swords is all about speaking with truth movement, creating change, but sometimes a little bit fearful of, of charging in with all of that truth because it can wreak havoc on our practical foundations that we find ourselves a party to. All right, that is what I have for you today. Pile number three. If this resonated with you, I would love to hear your story below in the comment section. I would love for you to be a part of our beautiful family if you aren't already. And subscribe to the channel and hit your notification bell if you decide to leave me a comment. And I can enter you in for a chance to win a free reading with me. I've also just recently posted up on Instagram an opportunity to win a free mini read. So head on over to that link below um, for your chance to win if you're interested. And I offer private readings through my Etsy account and that link is below as well. But I hope that you come back here for another day at the Tarot Cottage and I hope you have a beautiful day. Take care.